In early August, video showing hundreds of dead fish washing up near the Venetian Causeway in Miami started circulating online. The fish were coming from a body of water known as Biscayne Bay. Scientists found that a combination of low oxygen levels in parts of the water, along with high water temperatures, caused the week-long fish kill. However, the tidal wave of dead fish was not an isolated incident, but rather a symptom of a larger issue scientists say the bay has been experiencing for decades. Tipping point. That's how a 2019 study done by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration described the state Biscayne Bay is in. The study looked at water quality in the bay over the past 20 years and found it was slowly being filled with chlorophyll and phosphorus. Now, when you hear chlorophyll, you probably think of plants, and that's true. Chlorophyll is the green substance that absorbs light to help plants with photosynthesis. The same process happens in the ocean with algae. A combination of water, sunlight, and nutrients like phosphorus can help algae grow and grow. It's a natural process that happens, but too many nutrients can lead to algae blooms, which have dire consequences for living things in the water. And that's specifically nutrient pollution. So that's things like nitrogen and phosphorus that essentially get into the water and it fertilizes the water um, and it makes algae grow. So the algae and the bacteria use up all the oxygen available and then all of a sudden overnight, uh, all of the life in the water literally suffocates. But that wasn't always the case for Biscayne Bay. There was a point in time when it didn't even exist. Years ago, well, thousands of years ago, Florida's landmass was twice the size it is today. When glaciers melted and sea levels rose, the coastline receded and an estuary in South Florida was created. The body of water became Biscayne Bay and was part of a larger ecosystem that naturally filtered out nutrients like phosphorus. Historically, systems in South Florida were phosphorus limited because of the, the land and the water that were bringing phosphorus to the coast was a, a beautifully efficient phosphorus filter. So the phosphorus, you dump it someplace in the environment, it stayed there. There has been talk about cutting a ship canal across the north of Florida as an aid to coastwise navigation and to make Jacksonville an important seaport. At the turn of the 20th century, settlers and developers saw South Florida's coast as prime real estate. They chose to drain the swampy land and redirect the water flow through canals, sparking a chain of events that eventually led to breaking that efficient system. We replumbed the system. We, we changed it from a, a shallow river of grass to a series of deep, dark canals. Quite frankly, the minute we channelized the Everglades and started shunting river from the Everglades east and west, we basically broke the system. As soon as you move that amount of water, that distance, that is going through high density agricultural land, you basically started breaking the system. Altering the path of Florida's water flow was just the beginning. Once the land around Biscayne Bay was stable enough to build on top of, the next step was development. That led to a reliance on infrastructure that has since become outdated, specifically septic tanks. Sitting just beneath many people's homes in Miami-Dade are tanks filled with waste. When they were first installed, the tanks sat above groundwater that was part of the region's water supply. However, because of sea level rise, that groundwater has risen, and people's waste are now entering the aquifer untreated. Dade County, uh, the, the county grew with the idea that we have a very permeable rock base underneath us, and, and if you put waste down into the ground, you don't smell it, and it seems to go away. Well, it, it decomposes, but that phosphorus doesn't go anywhere. The phosphorus then pollutes the groundwater, and the groundwater moves into the canals and, and moves directly into the bay. So we've increased the efficiency of phosphorus transfer by channelizing the system. We're adding phosphorus because of farming activities, and we're adding phosphorus because of our waste and our waste products. The issue isn't going away anytime soon. There are over 100,000 septic tanks in Miami-Dade County, and a large percentage of them are near or around Biscayne Bay. The county estimates that in 20 years, over 60% of those septic tanks will malfunction. You cannot have a high density of septic systems that close to a bay and expect to not get these kinds of issues. And you know, if you think about how fast Miami has grown from 1930 or something to now, it's just extraordinary, right? I mean, how could we have thought about that growth rate? And we certainly did not keep up with the infrastructure that we needed, okay? So it's, it's kind of that simple. It would cost the county billions of dollars to overhaul the current sewer system, but scientists say it's just one of the many prices the area might have to pay to prevent things like this from becoming a yearly occurrence.